have to open the book and I know it and I can sing it. That's a, a great thing. Uh, several announcements this morning. Uh, some, most of these are in your bulletin. But, uh, first off, adult Bible study today. Warren would like to say a word on that. I just want to say uh, today's the beginning of a new Bible study, and you don't have to have done any preparation for it. So, so everybody, you're welcome to come on over there and join us. We're just mainly today. We're just going to talk about what we're going to do in this Bible study. So uh, no preparation. We got books, and you can take a book home with you. Be ready for the next lesson. Okay. Thank you. Um, other announcements: the men uh, breakfast will be next Saturday. January 22nd at 9 a.m. Uh, next Sunday will be our Sunday brunch, so be prepared for that. And then our annual congregation meeting will be on January the 30th. So we're required to announce that three times, I understand, before the meeting so everybody has notice of it. Uh, we have several people to put on our prayer list this morning. Uh, Ray Corcoran's sister, Arisa has been hospitalized with COVID, as you know. She, uh, we've had Arisa on our prayer list several months now, but she has uh, several difficulties and she has been hospitalized with COVID now. Um, Rosie Simbera had been hospitalized with COVID and now she's in TLC in um, Columbus, but now Melvin and Jane have came down with the COVID and they're not with us today. Menda Otto has come down with COVID. I understand that there's probably 20% of the people walking around with COVID and don't even know it. So we need about 20% of our people to be a mask today. So if you can decide who has it and who doesn't, we will. But other than that, it's just uh, business as usual. Um, do we have any other announcements? If not, we'll begin our worship service just, uh, yeah, I feel like I owe everybody an explanation of what I'm doing up here. Um, the, uh, a couple of months ago, the, uh, the the council and the senior pastor were meeting in a council meeting, and, and one of the th one of the topics that came up was uh, we should get somebody from the congregation to, to to come up here and share their testimony. And when I heard that, I just immediately jumped up and raised, "Yeah, me, 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 call on me!" And uh, they did. <laughs> so so here I am. Um, I, uh, I normally only wear a suit at, at funerals and memorial services these days, and, uh, and though we celebrate someone who's passing, the, for the rest of us left behind, it's kind of a sad occasion, and I thought, I definitely want to wear a suit on a happy, this is a, just a super joyous, happy occasion for me, so I, that's why I'm in a suit, so you probably none of y'all have ever seen me in a suit before, so, uh, so that's an explanation to that, and then I have one thing I want to add to our prayer list. Um, the, uh, the first responders and, and the hospital staffs in this world are getting just overwhelmed. I mean, in fact, a lot of them are quitting because they just can't handle the stress and the loading. It's, it's two years of this stuff, you know, and they're getting overwhelmed. So I'd, I'd ask you just every chance you get to, to pray for those first responders and hospital staffs because they, uh, they need our prayers desperately. So I just want to add that to the prayer list. Thanks. Thank you, Warren. Okay, let's all stand. Begin our worship service by singing hymn 659. We have a story to tell to the nations. <laughs>
love, O God, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice is like the great deep. Earth's children, high and low, take refuge in the shadow of your wings. We feast on the abundance of your house. You give us strength from your river of delights. Lord, we do is the fountain of life. In your light we see life. Glory be to you, O God. share my testimony with y'all. I've, I've, I've been a Christian only really a short time, not my entire life, so it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to be up here. And uh, So I just pray that you'll have open hearts, open minds, uh, and, and open spirits to, to, to hear what I have to say, That uh, and that maybe from hearing what I have to say, if I just touch one person, maybe you'll feel called to come up here and say something yourself one of these days. Um, but I see we have... We have a Scarlet and a Pierce in the house, so why don't we have a children's song? Hey guys, um, can y'all hear me? Oh yeah. yeah okay. Um, I used to uh, I used, I used to lead a, a a Bible study at the elementary school that we lived in. We lived in Polster, Texas, and. Uh, I, after school, we would have a Bible study. They, they, it was a public school, but they let us come in and have a Bible study. That was really cool. And so we would do. I would do. I would tell a Bible story during during this this uh, class, and it was all you know, it was all the way from oh second graders up to fifth graders. And uh, I would tell them at the end of the Bible story, you know, even if you don't remember the Bible story that much, if, when I ask you a question about the story, most of the time, if you say Jesus. That'll be the right answer. Okay? And it got to the point where I was saying that so many times that the kids would go tell their, the kids would go back to their class the next day and the teachers would ask them a question and if they didn't know the answer, they would go, Jesus! And, and some of the teachers uh, actually kind of got after me for that. They, Mr. Briggs, don't be teaching our kids that Jesus is the answer to every question. Well, you know, I did not feel guilty about that at all. Um, I, I, and I just told him, you know, Jesus is the answer to a lot of really important problems we have in life. So I, I just thought maybe you and I could practice this a little bit together. Okay, so who loves us more than anybody in the world? What? What? Yeah, yeah. They need to hear. Jesus. There you go, Pierce. All right. I knew I could count on Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to shout it out, okay? <laughs> so, so um, who should be our leader? Who should be our leader in this world? Pierce? Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Um, who, who, um, who is with us all the time? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's see. Who, who forgives us for everything we do wrong if we come to Him? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, that's right. And um, and I think we need to ask all of these folks if they're paying attention to what we're talking about up here, okay? So all of y'all answer this time. Who is the who is the most important leader in our lives? It's not a governor, it's not a president, it's not a mayor. Who is it? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, that's right. Good job. Thank you guys. All right, okay. Off to Sunday school with you. Thanks. I just wanted to make that point. <laughs> Please stand as we sing our second song. Now we'll sing the wonder story number 618. <laughs>
and breathe your spirit of unity into all peoples, that the world may live in harmony, and war shall be no more. Through Jesus, the power of peace. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. For our assurance of pardon, I chose something that I know you've heard before. It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's the word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay. Um, before we do the Apostles' Creed, uh, our most recent adult Bible study was about the Apostles' Creed. And I wanted to share a little bit of, of what we learned in that class for, for those who weren't able to come to that. Um, for hundreds of, work, hundreds of years, Jesus, the followers of Jesus relied on the word of his disciples the disciples of his disciples, the disciples of their disciples, and on and on and on. And um, as Christianity grew, and there was more people following Christ from different walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultures, um, a lot of kind of questions came up. You know, what is a Christian? So they formulated this Apostles' Creed so that we would have a fairly solid answer to, to what it is to be a Christian. Um, you know, some of the questions were, what exactly is the Trinity? The creed answers that. Uh, was Mary really a virgin? Is Jesus, if Jesus is God, can he truly suffer on the cross? What was Jesus doing at the time between his death on the cross and Easter morning? Should we hold Christians who came before us in a special kind of reverence? The creed answers all those questions and more. Um, because they're not the, the answer is not really specifically in in the Bible in the scriptures, so we, we needed a little something, and so we so we recite this creed to kind of re, help us remember what the answers to those questions are. Um, but there's still questions, you know. The creed didn't answer everything. We still we still baptize differently. We still celebrate communion differently. We still even worship on different days. So so God gave us all these denominations to handle all those different issues, and and so. Um, so there's still questions. We're questioning people, you know. We're not. We, we don't just. We don't just take things as they are. We. We. we our minds want to question things. Um, but if you're ever asked to be a Christian, I think really a simple answer is, if, if not, if you don't recite it to them, at least recite it in your mind. The Apostles' Creed. So if you'll join me, please, in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Last week, uh, Pastor Glenn talked about reading uh, from the lectionary. Uh, and I, I think the lectionary is really important, so I wanted to use the lectionary today as well. And, uh, Lo and behold, one of the scripture readings from the Old Testament in today's lectionary was just spot on to what I wanted to talk about anyway. So, so this reading is from, um, is from Isaiah chapter 62, and it's verses 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, 
a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate. But you will be called Hepzibah and your land Beulah. For the, Lord, for the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. I've known what I wanted to talk about for a long time today. Um, but when I saw this scripture, I thought, man, this is, this is good. Because it talks about, I will not keep silent. I will not remain quiet. The nations will see your vindication. So will your God rejoice over you. So that's exactly why I'm up here today. So let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we invite you to join us today in this church and in our hearts. We thank you for this beautiful day you've made. We thank you for this strength from your Son, Jesus, and the inspiration from your Holy Spirit. Please guide the words of this servant so that they may help and have meaning to this congregation. Amen. Okay, so about 25 years ago or so, I was single, um, living in Sealy. I had my kids every other weekend, and on the weekends that I didn't have kids, I would go into Houston and uh, spend Saturday night at my cousin's house. Now, there's a lot more to you, there's a lot more to do for a single man on a Saturday night in Houston than there is in Sealy. Okay, I, I'm sure some of y'all get that. Um, so that was that was a big deal. That was kind of like my one day every couple weeks when I would get out and, and do stuff. But but the deal we made, me and my cousin, was that we could go out and have a good time on Saturday night, but we would always go to church that next morning. We would all, and then after a while, we actually started attending Sunday school too. Um, and it was in that Sunday school. I really, I really met a lot. It was, it was about 50 people. It was about the size of this congregation, really, maybe even a little larger. Um, and I really got to know the people. I really got to, really got to enjoy my relationship with them. And um, one of these, and, and what they did for their teaching was they just they cycled. They had several different teachers, and they would take turns doing it. Um, but one Sunday, after I'd been going there for a while, one Sunday they said, "You know, we're, we're, we're missing. We got one Sunday that's opening. You know how we call for." Uh, people to sign up for liturgists and everything here. We, we need somebody to come teach. And I thought, you know, I, I'd like to give, you know, I'd like to take a whirl at this, you know. And it was, uh, you know, like, like most people, I was just terrified of being a, in front of a large group of people. But, you know, they were, they were my friends. So I thought, you know, I, I can do this. Uh, so about the time that we did this, there was a big show downtown at one of the museums downtown on the, uh, on the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. So I thought, you know, I'm an engineer, I'll just do a presentation on the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that was gonna be my message for the day. So I made all these uh, flyers and, and handouts, and I, and I went up there and I had, a, I had a prepared speech, you know, and I just, I just read from it, and, I, and, and I, I tell you, I read it so fast, I don't know anyone could have understood anything I said. I mean, it was, should have been 20 minutes, it was over in about five. So I thought, oh, this is terrible. What have I done to these people, you know? Oh, this, this is awful. And so after the Sunday school class, we would all go out. It was, it was in a big building, so it was a large classroom, and then there was a hallway. We'd all go out in the hallway and sort of have fellowship afterwards, similar to what we do after church over here in the fellowship hall. And, and so I went out there, and I'm you know, expecting to apologize to everybody. I'm so sorry about that lesson today. And uh, I think everybody in that class came up to me and grabbed my arm, shook my hand, <laughs> Or gave me a hug, or, or told me how much they liked it, and I thought, wow, you know, I was just floored. I couldn't believe, you know, this fellowship of Christ is so uplifting and encouraging. It, it's it's beyond your imagination sometimes. And so I thought, I got to do this again sometime. Um, I have another scripture I want to read for you. This is from the Gospel of Matthew. It's chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. That's a, uh, if you're afraid to come up here and speak, just read that before you come, okay? We are all called to speak out in the name of Jesus. Jesus wasn't just talking to his disciples. He was talking to us. Um, so after, after answering that call to teach a Sunday school class, I thought, you know, I could do way better than this. If God expects me to do better, I expect me to do better. And so um, where I placed, the place I worked at, um, they had a Toastmasters club that met once a week at lunchtime. And I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join that. I'm going to learn how to speak in front of people. I'm going to learn how to do this, you know, because I, I definitely want to share my experience with Christ with other people. And so um, I, I checked out the class, and this is a God moment right here. Not only did they, not only did the company sponsor the Toastmasters group by uh, giving them a, a room to meet in at lunchtime, they also provided free lunch. Okay, now... I'm not someone who passes up a free lunch, okay? So uh, I was down for that. This was God speaking to me. Warren, go to this Toastmaster club. So, so I did. Um, and, and what they told me, and it's I think the most important thing I learned in that class, was uh, no, no matter where you're speaking, the people that are here to hear you speak want to hear you speak. They're glad to hear you speak. They, you know, they, they're... It's, 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 it's a good thing. No matter how many butterflies you got flying in your stomach, you know, what Toastmasters teaches you is just train those butterflies to fly in the direction you want to go in. Butterflies are good. If you're excited, you should have butterflies. Otherwise, this can't be a very exciting moment for you, a very exciting message if you don't have butterflies. So after you kind of accept that and you just say, okay, butterflies, just fly me where you will, um, it's really just a small step to go um, I was going to say, the first speech you ever give in Toastmasters is a speech about yourself. You know yourself better than anybody, right? Better than any other subject, probably. I think it's just a really small step to go from speaking about yourself to speaking about yourself and in your relationship with God, about your relationship with Jesus Christ. So it's just a, just a little tiny step forward from, from talking about yourself, really. Um, the word gospel, does everybody know what the word gospel means? Good news, right? And who doesn't like sharing good news? I mean, come on. You, you, you just when you hear good news, usually you're just bursting to go share it with somebody else. I, I think I'm right in that. Um, so I think when we know when we when we have the good news of Jesus Christ in our heart, in our minds, in our spirit, in our soul, we've got to go share it. We've got to go share it. Um, it's a uh, I think an opportunity to share the gospel is going to be one of the most important and uplifting moments in your life to anyone who does it. Uh, this church is amazingly giving for its size. You know, the shoe boxes, the uh, tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it. You know, if we're asked, we rush out there to give. Uh, one thing I learned about the nativity scene out here this year, if, if, if you're not early, you're going to get left out. You're not going to get to do anything. We're, we're supposed to be here at a certain time. You've got to be here 30 minutes earlier. It's going to all be done, you know, by the time. You know, I, I got here 10 minutes late one year, a couple years ago. And it was, everything's finished. There wasn't anything to do. It was pretty much pull the parking lot, say hi to everybody, pull out again. I, you know, th this church loves to give, loves to give. But I, I think there's something we could kind of add to that. We could add our voices to that. Okay? Um, and, and there's a lot of opportunities. There's teaching the children's Sunday school class, um, doing, a, doing a devotional at the men's breakfast, or, or, or speaking up at a, at a, during a Bible study. Um, you could talk to a neighbor about Jesus. You could talk to a coworker about Jesus. You could volunteer to be a liturgist. I, I mean, we, we have a voice. We need to use it, you know? Um, I know speaking of liturgists, I know Stuart just loves me. Liturgist. I mean, it, I mean, he lives for the day he gets to be liturgist, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I know, I know, I know he's he's just antsy that week. Kathy has to just settle him down all week long. Um, but uh, another way you can raise your voice, and I'm looking at my my dear friends over here when I'm about to say this, is 
I've sat out in this congregation. There's some amazing voices out here waiting to be heard. You can join this choir, okay? And, 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 and Stuart, I recommend you keep the liturgist gig, okay? But, but the rest of y'all can sing in this choir, okay? Um, it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's an opportunity to make a joyful noise, literally, to the Lord. And, and I guarantee you, the Lord loves every word that comes out of our mouth in His praise. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. I mean, can I hear an amen on that? Amen, I, amen. amen to that. It's, it's, Jesus wants to hear from us, whether it's prayer, whether it's hymns, whether it's your testimony up here in front of the church. So I just want to say, you can do this. You can do this. Um, you've seen me do it, so obviously anyone can do it. <laughs> so I invite you to come up here and speak. Say something in your Bible study. Say something to one of your neighbors. Invite a neighbor to church. Come sing in the choir, please. We got plenty of empty chairs. You know, and COVID just keeps knocking us out, knocking us out. Um, speaking of COVID, I, this is a whole other subject. This weekend I heard that, um, you know how y'all y'all know that BC is before Christ. That, that's a common measurement of time, right? A lot of people, and I heard this a lot of the, the tournament I played in yesterday, a lot of people are using BC to mean before COVID now. Because COVID has just changed this world so much that it's gonna be it's gonna be a milestone in the history of the human race I mean, at the rate we're going. So um, so I, I, I think that all those folks, I guess I should speak to the camera now, is uh, all of you folks out there with COVID, we, we miss you, we, we're waiting, looking forward to you to come back and uh, um, be, be ready to speak when you do come back. This, would you please join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time to be up here, this church, in this fellowship, the fellowship of this congregation. We ask today that you push us out of the door and give us strength to go out into the world to continue the work of building your kingdom. Let's join together for the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One last thing that somebody told me when they were advising me on how to speak in front of a church or a congregation is that was, uh, you know, the shorter it is, the better. You know, people will appreciate that. So, so that's what I had to say.
the ushers will come forward. We will now collect our morning offering. Thank you. 